Okay, what I would like to do first off is to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and my crew already has done it, but we like to say it a lot, so we're going to do it again. Stand and turn to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. like to do is to take a moment of silence for those that we have lost. Um, we have lost members, we have lost family members, and uh, I would like to take a, just a silent moment to think of them in memory. And then I'm going to have Roger say a prayer. I would like to thank everyone for coming out. It's kind of warm in here, but we're trying to use fans and keep it cool. Um, we are very excited to have our son, our sergeant, Dominic Tapata, from 101st Airborne out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And I am going to let him continue to take over the mic, and uh, then I'll come back again. With a warm welcome, let's welcome... First Sergeant Tapata. You know, I guess uh, I'll start by saying, you know, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, this has been a uh, something that's been in the works for a while uh, to uh, get this kind of lined up with the schedule here for these military appreciation nights and my schedule down down at Fort Campbell. Uh, so it worked out really well, and uh, my wife and I, Jessica, uh, over there sitting down, is uh, we're, we're excited to be here as, as well, because uh, I, I think it's important. Every time we come to Macon, we always come through the uh, Historical Society here, and it's usually once a year for you know four or five days we're, we're able to spend time with family in Macon. And every time we come up here, there's something new with the historical society here. It's just amazing. Uh, so, you know, hats off to, uh, to Sally and the team up here to keep it going, because I think this is, uh, this is probably the most important part of the community here in Macon and, and communities from uh, across the, the, uh, the country as, as well, because it's important to know about the history and you don't know how many people in that community has had uh, sacrifices and ties uh, to the military. So uh, yesterday we got in and actually got a little tour. Uh, the military room downstairs is phenomenal. It just keeps adding to it. And every time I come here also, I learn something new. And it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty uh, it's something I look forward to, not only spending time with family, but you know, coming here and kind of seeing all the new donated goods and services uh, so but anyway um, I, you know I think it's just true testament to the, the community uh, you know level of support for uh, keeping something like this going as well as uh, you know, preserving the history of our military uh, but I really didn't know what I was going to talk about I says mom what am I going to talk about I mean I don't know really everybody I know a few people um, but she said just normally it's, well, it's Military Appreciation Night, you know. You got to know your audience and know what the theme is. It's like speech 101, so I was like, okay. So I started just writing down notes, and of course, you know, the, the brains of my operation, my wife, you know, just, just tell them where you're stationed at and where you've been at. It's your story, so... I first came in the military in the Army in 1997 uh, from Wentzville, Missouri. You know, I was in and out of, uh, after high school, I attempted college, but I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and 
see what this thing's about. Those uh, be all you can be army commercials at two in the morning got me to go to the uh, recruiter station. Uh, I think I pat I think I fell asleep for a few uh, few of the uh, sections on the ASVAB, and I missed a few of the uh, test answers and qualified for one job. Uh, that job was a cook. Uh, wasn't bad, you know. I, I, I grew up around you know lots of lots of family, lots of food, lots of uh, holidays. So I was like, I guess I'll give it a try. Uh, so I joined the army as a cook uh, back then and went to uh, basic training at Fort Jackson in uh, January of '97. Uh, from there, uh, after it was a co-ed basic, so. You know, males and females, and um, don't, don't take this out of context, but after basic, I did not want to talk to another female for a while. We were, were always getting smoked for them being late to formation, or they didn't do barracks maintenance right, or something, and it was, it was constant headaches, but uh, we fought through the uh, eight weeks of pain together and, and uh, graduated. Um, I was really done when we went to the field, uh, for our final field problem, and uh, we're digging in foxholes, and and I was appointed a squad leader, and uh, the only thing we had to have on us was our our pro mask, our gas mask on our hip, and uh, our weapon within arm's reach. While we're digging, we could not we could not take our mask off, but we can keep our weapon uh, that had blanks and everything in it for you know reacting to an uh, attack or whatever scenario the drill sergeants want to throw at us, but. Uh, day one, I, I'm, I'm highly allergic to poison ivy, so I was like, well, at least I won't get that. Uh, being an infantry guy, I'll be a cook, I'm, I'm, I'll stay away from poison ivy. And Anyway, long story short, I, basic training, I, about the third day, I was like, man, my back is killing me. And, and uh, my battle buddy said, well, what, what's wrong? Did you do field hygiene right? I was like, yeah, I did it right. I did exactly what they told me to do. And uh, he said, let me see under your shirt. So he said, Oh man, you gotta go tell drill sergeant. You gotta go tell him. I was like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. We're like three days from graduation. I do not want to go to sick call for nothing and, and go recycle. But I went up there, and uh, drill sergeant's reaction uh, when I showed him I had poison ivy. It started from one side, and because of the strap of my mask, it it uh, it, it would spread and, and all this stuff. And he said, I said, drill sergeant, my, my back is killing me. Said, well, let's see it. And, you know, all hard and stuff, and I lifted my shirt, and he, his reaction, I'll never forget, he looked back and said, good God, son, get on the truck, and I was like, <laughs> but I don't want to, I need to rock march back, right, and said, get on the, you know, he's, he had some choice words, <laughs> get on the truck, private, but uh, that, 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 that was kind of like the, uh, the, the, the foundation of drill sergeant, um, I, I knew that I wanted to be one one day, and, um, um, it was years later where I had the opportunity, but after basic, I went to uh, AIT, which is uh, Advanced Individual Training, to learn my, my MOS, my job as a cook, and, and working in the dime facilities, uh, cooking mass quantity meals for, you know, three, four hundred people a meal, and um, that was in uh, uh, 23rd Quartermaster over there at uh, Fort Lee, Virginia. I remember I had a pass, and my grandma and grandpa, grandma, raise your hand over there. So uh, they was like, hey, we're traveling in North Carolina. We're going to come visit you. And, man, I, I was high on the hog that day because I got, a, like, a, a six-hour pass. And as soon as I was waiting for them to let me go, I could see their van. And they signed me out, and I ran out, and I said, let's go get some pizza. I need something to eat. And they took me to get some pizza. And uh, it was a good visit. And every, all my battle buddies in the barracks were like, oh, man, this, this is wrong. Bring back something. And I said, no, well, can't do it. It's contraband. Uh, but anyway, uh, Fort Campbell, uh, or after AIT, I, I went to uh, airborne school at Fort Benning, uh, injured myself uh, during a, a PLF, a parachute landing fall, pra practicing for those, and they sent me a sick call, wound up going on what's called a profile where you can't really uh, finish the course until you're done with your, your uh, physical therapy or whatever. And I said, well, I'm not going back through all that because I was like on day seven and it's like a 15-day course. And 
So he says, well, you're going to take orders anywhere in the world. I says, well, okay. Just a 21-year-old private, not really knowing. And we're all standing in line, and, you know, Private James, you're going to Korea. Private Defada, Fort Campbell. And I was like, where's Fort Campbell? And it worked out because it was four hours from St. Louis, and that's where uh, Jess and I really started uh, connecting more. Uh, so I was assigned to Fort Campbell. I went to air assault school, which is uh, returning from helicopters and doing sling loads in 1998. Uh, from there, uh, probably in the field uh, a lot. I was in 3rd Brigade, uh, Rock Hassan. Some of you may have uh, been familiar with the, what the Rock Hassans are capable of. Uh, by Mary Jess, started a family. Uh, my daughter Isabella was born. And then I re-enlisted for Fort Lewis. Uh, went to Fort Lewis. Um, well, yeah, I, I won't say that story of Fort Campbell. But Fort Campbell was a, as a private, it was very hard. It was, uh, I, I couldn't stand the place. I, I didn't have the maturity. And I was still a young, a young soldier. And, um, you know, we worked a lot of hours in the defect, a lot of hours in the field. And, um, you know, we had a lot of issues with discipline amongst the platoon. Uh, so I was ready to leave uh, when my reenlistment window came open. Went to Fort Lewis, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. It's up there. Uh, it's about an hour and a half south of Seattle. Uh, we pcs which is a, everyone knows what that is, but if, if you don't, it's a permanent change of station. And we drove from Fort Campbell to uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. Um, it took us three days with a young daughter, stopping every eight hours, you know, uh, during the winter months. It was like January. And uh, going through uh, the mountains. So we're going through Wenatchee. And, uh, well, the highway we hit, <laughs> It, you could see it forked off. Uh, one direction was Oregon, and the other direction was uh, to, to Seattle. And I saw this big snow storm cloud, and I said, no, nah, I think I'll go to the, I'll go to the right, because that's down that way. Well, by the time we got up to Wenatchee National Forest, that storm was on us, and uh, Jess was really nervous about driving through the snow, much less we were in a, a Toyota Camry with no four-wheel drive. Had it, had it loaded down with a bunch of weight. And I remember going up up the mountain really slow, uh, no tire chains, uh, coming down, just coasting down. And I was like, don't worry about it, babe. You know, growing up in Missouri, I'm good to go. I can drive in snow. I'm good. And she's like, no, this isn't safe. And I knew it wasn't safe when, when I saw a minivan going down backwards. Uh, I'm like, oh. See, they messed up. They they turned the wheels the wrong way. They they're not gonna they're not gonna get it. Uh, but we finally got out of the mountains and uh, uh, got to Seattle. Checked in there, uh, Fort Lewis. I was assigned to Third Brigade, Second ID. Uh, it was uh, General Senseki was the uh, chief of staff of the Army at the time, and he was making a lot of changes. That's when the Army went to the berets. Um, he went to the whole striker vehicles instead of the Humvees and all that. So I went from six months of the year in the field to transformation of a striker brigade and didn't go to the field for two years. We just trained up on the new equipment, which was nice for uh, starting a new family. Um, but my son was born there, Rocco. Uh, he was born over there in, in a, let's see, 2002. And then we PCS'd uh, from, uh, from Hawaii in uh, late 2002 after he was promote, after he was born. But up at Fort Lewis, I did a lot of culinary arts things. Uh, like every year, Fort Lee hosts a culinary arts um, a show over there. It's the biggest culinary arts show in the country. Um, every post sends, every installation sends a team of 12 to 15 people. And uh, anyway, we went over there and we did pretty well. Uh, PCS to Hawaii. Well, actually, uh, they were the, if, the army was handing out a lot of bonuses back then too, and I finally got my first bonus. I couldn't imagine like all these privates were coming in, don't know nothing, and they're getting like twenty thousand, ten thousand dollar bonuses. 
And I was like, man, this, I, I missed the boat. What is, I must have got the wrong job or something. But anyway, I come back in from something and I stopped by a recruiter station and uh, they, they offered us a bonus and Hawaii. So I said, my wife was like, hell yeah, let's go. So we went to Hawaii. Uh, so our next adventure of a PCS with a young child, my son, what was he, like three, four weeks? Three weeks old in a plane from Seattle to Honolulu, uh, crying the whole time. Uh, I finally just sat separate from them, like I don't know them. But uh, <laughs> we got to Hawaii, they packed us in the van and had like three other families in us. And then we were stuck in lodging for 54 days, 54 days in a, in a hotel room with two small children. And I was just a, just a sergeant. I just I made sergeant in May before I left in 2001. So, uh, you know, I'd always go check with housing. Hey, is there a house available? Is there a house available? No, not this week. It's not available. Not available. Well, at, when you PCS overseas, you get 60 days of temporary lodging expense. And I was at 54. And that's where they pay for your, your lodging. Uh, and, and after 60, you have to pay for it yourself. And as an E5, you know, young family. That wasn't gonna happen with uh, Mama Bear over there. So uh, she's 54. On the 53rd day, I said, "I'm going to housing tomorrow." Well, I'm coming with you. I'm gonna talk to those guys. Well, she went in there and uh, shedded a few tears, and it worked. And next thing you know, we had a house. And I was like, "Dang, you should have came with me three weeks ago." <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I knew the power of Household Six. That's the commander of every household in the military. Uh, call sign, call signs in the military. You guys know it's, it's uh, six is the commander, seven's the uh, the first sergeant or the sergeant major. Uh, but anyways, we finally got there. Uh, I was on, uh, I was assigned to uh, headquarters, headquarters uh, troop, uh, three quarter cav, all over there on Wheeler Army Airfield. <coughs> if you ever seen the movie Pearl Harbor. Uh, Wheeler is where those uh, the planes actually take off from to counterattack, and they actually filmed it right right on that field, uh, which was kind of nice uh, to be you know it's kind of cool to be a part of that or not part of it but just to know that hey I I saw that part in the movie you know, but uh, I was a night baking in CIC and night baking you you cook all the pastries all the biscuits everything for the next day, you prep all the omelet ingredients and all that. And um, um, we did a few uh, 